uh, have the discussion. Yeah. There are organizers, chair, chairman, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for accepting our abstract for our presentation. It's not really advanced research, it's more like uh, practical thoughts and uh, considerations on the subject. Mitral regurgitation is the second most frequent valvular disease. The trend is more valve sparing procedures with the use of preferably valvular plasterings. The valvular plasterings fail with one to four persons per year with the need of re-intervention. Valden ring is then an alternative. The questions are if all valvular plasterings are suitable for this technique and how to size from an oval ring to a circular valve. So, which rings are possible to implant uh, in? Uh, in? Uh, we have uh, discussed this in uh, poster D19, so we will not say any more about this than that we find the uh, fissure ring suitable. Then the next challenge is how to size. Because uh, the fissure rings, uh, the given size of these are like a, a circle here in C, is the inner um, uh, longest diameter. Uh, we can also do CT reconstruction and uh, take the longest diameter and the shortest diameter, divide in two, and have a, a boat uh, uh, size. Uh, Winnie Babat uh, has also made uh, some uh, uh, area uh, uh, evaluations, so we can re reconstruct from that. Uh, but we thought it was, this was a bit uh, in, unprecise, so we decided to do some uh, bench tests. We first calculated diameters from Winnie Bapat's app, both from the area and from the length and the uh, width, and uh, divided in two. Then we fit the fusion rings on the carbometric sizers, and then we measured the outer diameter on the uh, carbometric sizers with a caliper. And then, in the end, we did bench test uh, of valve and ring. And the results were a bit surprising, or inconsistent, to say it more precise, because uh, if you see here, the given size of a carbometric sizer is not the, si the, the size that I, I measured with the caliper. And for the 28 uh, fusion ring that is most often used, the measurements for the app with the length and width divided in two were about 22, and that was also divided from the area. But when it fitted perfectly on a 23 carbometric sizers that I measured to 24.2. So, sizes are quite uh, confusing. Um, so, we conclude that the valve and ring is feasible for semi rigid uh, anoplasty rings. The given size for an anoplasty ring is not the same as the measured diameter when the shape is circular. For the moment, the Edward Sapin XT may be deployed in fusion rings from size uh, 26 to 34. I put the uh, arrows around the 24 because uh, that fits on a 19 size, so I think the gradient will be too big. Thank you. Thank you. So if we can have the uh, Dr. Daly and um, yeah, Dr. Pocanori back. Uh, let's see, do we need another? I might not have enough. Well, you can just stay standing. How about that? I okay. Does, uh, we have a few minutes for discussion, so um, I think while we have some people coming up, Dr. Guy, did you, um, have you done any augmentation of the posterior leaflet? Yeah, I found that much more, I have. I found it much more difficult geometrically um, because, you know, with the anterior leaflet, it's, it's basically a two-dimensional structure, whereas I think the posterior leaflet is three-dimensional. And it's sitting right in front. And, and it's, extre yeah. it's extremely, I've, I've found great difficulty getting the geometry of that correct. I don't know what your experience mm -hmm. has been. It, the, I, I think this is a, an excellent operation. and. and uh, have you extended this to patients with radiation-induced valvulopathy, rheumatic disease, severe MAC? Because I think that I'm, I've, I've done a fair number Absolutely. of those cases, and I think they, those benefit as well. Yes, I, I've, I've done uh, all the above. I've done patients with mitral stenosis in combination with a uh, uh, commiserotomy. Uh, we recently did a case of a patient with uh, you know, unbelievable MAC where I just simply left the posterior leaflet entirely alone, augmented the anterior leaflet, and put no ring on with good results. I'm, I think it's a very powerful and reproducible technique. Great, thanks. Dr. Damiano? 
Yeah, just uh, Sloan, very interesting report, but a little worrisome about the core matrix patch, and, and we've used that for leaflet augmentation, and at least to my knowledge yet, we have not seen this degeneration. Um, so, I mean, that would have a lot of implications because people are using these patches a lot. How big are your patches that you're uh, that you're using? Because one of the thoughts that we had is, you know, these are huge patches. They're the size yeah. of a sizer, essentially. Yeah, that's a, quite a bit bigger leaflet. than what we've used. We've yeah. used it for anterior leaflet augmentation, you know, in rheumatic disease. Um, we've used it for posterior leaflet augmentation. Actually, we've done like some people describe posterior leaflet augmentation for type three, uh, you know, restriction because that can work also. Right. You know, yeah. I, I, I like your technique. Just wondering, is there anything that you think you do? How do you suture the patch on? Yeah, so that's one of the things that have come up. We use Gore-Tex suture primarily for robotics because it works uh, better with the robotic instruments. We have used proline. Um, there have been uh, cases of uh, suture blowout with both uh, suture techniques. There's been some concern would Gore-Tex suture cause an enhanced inflammatory reaction. I would suspect that might lead to a suture line dehiscence, but the primary mode of failure has been the patch dilates and, um, and uh, you know, gets larger than it was in the beginning, and that causes prolapse, which I think would be unrelated to it. Um, I think the real differentiating technical factor is the fact that these are huge patches, basically the size of, you know, of, of an anterior leaflet almost. And that, uh, that size may have something to do with it, where if you put in a very small, say, centimeter by centimeter patch, may not be an issue. I've used this for root enlargements, for ASDs, uh, and, and not had that problem. But I think that the biology of the, and the physics of the anterior leaflet mitral valve is different. And it may just be too much stress on too big a patch in order to mature. But for a small hole, you know, small patch, it might work just fine. Yeah, I think I might stop using it for root enlargement if I were you. Yeah, yeah I've I, never I, had the guts to use it for that. And now with your report, <laughs> I probably never will. But, um, uh, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I was wondering also, you know, nervous. why do you choose to do the anterior? Was it was posterior leaflet restriction. Why not augment the posterior leaflet like it's been described? What I do think, you think the advantage is well, of the anterior Well, in part it may just be because my own um, lack of skills with augmenting the anterior or the posterior leaflet. You know, we found this uh, paper with ACAR's group, uh, and it was just so reproducible. You simply take the, you take the sizer, you cut an exact, I don't even do it, my assistant cuts an exact patch of that exact shape, you detach the anterior leaflet, you sew it in. That's just extremely easy to do it. I mean, anyone in the room could do that. Whereas with the posterior leaflet, the geometry for me is very difficult to avoid shortening the, the, um, the leaflet. I mean, I'm sure eventually I'll figure it out, but I found this to just be so much easier um, and um, reproducible. I had a quick question for Dr. Daly. Um, what would you see the advantage of your approach over the mitre clip for edge-to-edge -edge, uh, reapproximation? The, uh, we can both place multiple clips or multiple sutures, so that's, that's not a problem in terms of how you position it, and it's straightforward with this instrument to put things where you want, especially in a clinical situation we have 3D echo, so it's a lot easier than me with one hand running an epicardial probe and another controlling the instrument in the, in the lab. So getting them where you want the sutures is straightforward. Um, the, we have experience, long time experience with sewing rings, sewing suit, uh, leaflets together uh, and there's not long experience with what happens with these clips after they're in there for a while. If we have uh, uh, an issue with our repair uh, uh, that comes along with recurrent mitral regurgitation, it would be possible to re-repair the valve. The, where the clip, if the clip uh, causes a lot of uh, fibrosis, that, that valve may not be repairable in an open manner again. And then the other thing is we have uh, these artificial, potentially artificial cord to support uh, a, a bileaflet repair so that if there was, for example, bileaflet prolapse uh, and one wanted to use uh, edge to edge approach, then one could do edge to edge and still have artificial cordy to support it. Uh, which may expand the, the uh, pathology that this uh, particular approach could be applied to, so a broader type of pathology. Great. Thanks. I think we have time for one more question, and then we'll have to get to the exhibit hall. 
uh, Nicholas Monaro since we could go back to the chromatrix issue. Um, do you have any histology from, from those? I guess you replaced the valve afterwards. Yeah. Do you have any histology? Yeah, that's because I find this, Very your close. finding that the, the, the patch was dilated is actually opposite to our experience. We use it in pit cases to construct a right ventricular outflow tract with a pulmonary valve, and you have a hyperplasia, so exactly the opposite. Yeah, that's a great question. We have done some histology, and there is evidence of neo um, entomal uh, formation as well as neo revascularization, but there's also uh, evidence of inflammation with uh, neutrophils, macrophages, and whatnot. Uh, we're still studying that tissue, um, but, uh, but there's no doubt that, that, that grossly these uh, leaflets are generally much, much more dilated than when we first did the procedure. And since we switched to native pericardium, we've had you know, essentially no problems. So um, I think there is something to it and, and more to follow. Great. Thank you. Well, that'll um, end this session. And